Hi, this is Dr. Emily Scherning with AR, and I'd like to say hello to all of our friends in Appalachia, particularly, of course, our friends from the homesteading and permaculture subreddits, whose frequent requests have led me to do this unusual regional forecast. There are a lot of cool people making a real go of it in this special region, this mountainous region, keeping old skills alive and learning new ones. And all of you who wanted to know specifically about what's going on here, you do have the right idea. The forecast is distinct. There are details you need. And as should not surprise you, there are no other resources I could find focused on your climate uh, projections for specifically this region. So I learned how to use some new tools and I made some maps for you folks. And before I get going, I just wanna say I am a little nervous to do this forecast because I know someone's gonna yell at me because I didn't define this region like they wanted me to. So please, I did my best. There's a difference between the broadly defined region, the cultural region, which you might agree with the Appalachia Regional Commission's map here on that, just a second. So that's the ARC's map and the region with a distinct climatological forecast, which let's take a second and look at that. Here we go. So this map here is showing heat zones in the US. The number of days over 86 degrees from uh, 1980 to 2009. If you look here, you can see extending from up here in Pennsylvania to just hitting the tip of Georgia. We've got a special area this is what I'm going to be describing in our Appalachia forecast. This is a climatologically privileged area. We're going to look at this heat zone map to see how the summer heat is going to change here. And I'm going to show you how to get back to this so that you can take a look for yourself. So just a second, we're going to get over to our projected future. We're going to look at continued high emission scenario for like now to 2030, 2040, and then a low emission scenario for 2050. That's in line with current legislation. And I do think people are gonna get very scared about the effects of climate change as we move through the 2020s. I do think that on a federal level, on a systemic level, we will be reducing emissions as planned because we're all gonna be feeling it. I mean, Talk about the extreme weather. We've really been feeling it these last couple of weeks, right? The reduced emission scenario that the government has planned for that is in the reduced emissions model we're gonna look at, they're not that reduced of emissions. It includes the use of some fossil fuels. It's not a particularly radical or unachievable scenario. So now I'm gonna get into the map now that I've done this preamble. So here we are in the modern day to look at the different scenarios, go to that middle box, expand heat zones. You can see right now it's showing historical. RCP 8.5 is the level of emissions we currently have. That's the high emission scenario. So let's look at what might change as we move through present day towards 2030, 2040. We can see that there is a heat up on this area, but look at how dramatically reduced it is compared to the area around it. Take a second and look at the key. So this area started with less than two weeks of over 86 at the top of the mountains, and it's still there. In the foothills, you will be getting warmer summers, but dramatically cooler than around it. And you can see that up in the mountains of themselves, that summer chill, the low summer temperatures are preserved. So we go back here, we move the 2040-2069 down to 4.5, the reduced emission scenario, the modeled plan for very reasonable reduced emission scenario. Let's see what happens. We can see continued creep, but very good preservation, very good stability in our special cultural area here. And even if we look out in the long range towards the end of the century, even under that scenario, the long range scenario, there is a lot of continuity of cool summers 
even in the upper foothills, even towards the end of the century. And I mean, look back at the key. We can see that these end of century projections are looking very hot for surrounding areas. This is 151 to 180 days over 86 Fahrenheit when we look um, down here in uh, Columbia. So it's remarkable this conservation that we have here, this conservation of the summer chill in Appalachia uh, allows you to keep a lot of the plants that are gonna bolt or wither or otherwise die in summer heat in this area. So that should be very exciting news for people interested in this region. I've got news coming up for you that's also good as we switch over to the plant hardiness zones. Let's check that out. Plant hardiness zones are gonna let us look at where the uh, winter lows tend to go. So we were looking at summer highs. We see that those are conserved fairly low. Let's check out the winter lows. I'm gonna walk you through the plant hardiness zone map and it's gonna show you how to get back to the heat zone map. Give me just a second here. So this is the website that you're gonna to wanna to go to. Climate hubs, usda.gov, hubs, topics, shift, growing degree, days, plant, hardiness zones, and heat zones. Rolls right off the tongue, right? And then when you get here, it's not gonna give you what you want. You have to go down to the story map. Then you go to the story map, it's not gonna give you what you want. There's a long introduction it's going to tell you a little bit more about what that 4.5 and 8.5 are in case you forget. Don't even worry about that little slider though. Use the big slider here. We're looking at these maps today, plant hardiness zone map and heat zone. Heat zone, remember, that's what we looked at just a minute ago, days over 86. So you can go back in there and the mechanics are going to be the same. So we're just going to walk through the mechanics of the plant hardiness zones. We get into this long preamble and you gotta click there. Where it says click here, you click there to get into the interactive map. Plant hardiness zones, you probably remember those from any seed packet, right? It lets you know how cold it gets from uh, in the area based on historical data from the 80s. We'll zoom in here. We can see that right now, our uh, special area in the mountains, we're talking about zone six, zone seven, right? Little bit up high here, you knock back into zone five, very small zone five area in Appalachia. Now, remember what I did before? We click on that middle button, expand either the heat or the plant hardiness zones. They have the same mechanics, these maps go down to the bottom. Let's look at that continued high emission scenario for the near future, because we know that no one's making an abrupt 180 policy turn right now, right? Like, we see the shift, right? We dropped from six to seven, we dropped from five to six. That shift is coming pretty soon, that shift towards zone seven. But here's where the good news comes in. It's likely, if we look at mid-century with reduced emissions, that that shift may not com be complete. We'll look at like a 6B, 7A thing. Because if you look at the mid-century modeling under reduced emissions, we see actually very little change in this region. We see that it continues to be at ag zone 6, 7. And then look up here. If we look at the, the modeling for end of century, Again, very little change. It's going to stay six, seven. So this is not the sort of dramatic two to three ag zone shift that I've noted in other regions of the country. In my video for Arizona, uh, we saw like a four zone shift projected for some parts of Arizona by end of the century. Here in Appalachia, this area in West Virginia could potentially see no change under reasonable current legislation models by the end of the century. 
There's like no other part of the country where I have found potentially no change. So here, we're gonna stop share for a second, get back to the script. It's, it's remarkably stable here. And this is about the best news that I've gotten to give. It's just for you folks in this special band. You're going to get the change soon. You're going to get a one chain, one zone shift, and then it's going to be over. In the next 10 to 15 years, you may be facing the worst of it in terms of heat up, and then it's going to stabilize. And that is not true for anywhere else in the country. If you're not sure if you fall in that band, if you think you might be kind of marginal, you rewind this video, go back to the website. You can zoom down really close and check it out. Just take it slow. Give the website time to load uncheck any boxes you don't want to look at. Even with good internet, the close up focus maps are not going to load right away. They're slow. So be patient and you'll be able to use that tool and find out if you're in the zone or not. Let me back out though. I don't want to sugarcoat things. <clears throat> if you live in these mountains, you already know that the weather in this area is less than delightful, right? You should be preparing for more extreme weather events. There is a projection for increased hail potential at the northern end of this range up by Pennsylvania more frequent and larger hail, that large diameter hail. Let's look at the map for historic changes in precipitation towards the southern end of the range. Get a little peek at this. All right, you can see our southern end of the range leading into Georgia. There's kind of this ridge of changes in heavy precipitation running along the mountains. And the coloring here might be a little counterintuitive. When we're looking at the red, that's the wet side. When we're looking at the blue, that's the dry side, because red here is increased in days with precipitation above three inches. So extreme weather events over the last 120 years have greatly increased in the mountains. Unfortunately, scientists are, are achieving a consensus right now that if you're in an area with a trend up or a trend down to expect those trends to continue these deluges they're already hurting communities in this region they're killing people when we talk about extreme weather i think we're all coming to realize that that can be deadly so as you're getting ready for what's coming as you build resilience in your home and your community that's the thing for you to prioritize those ag zone shifts those heat shifts I think you can do it. That's pretty mild. A one zone shift coming up. It's not too big. It's going to happen in the next 10, 15 years. And then it's going to be over. It's going to be over for you in your lifetime. The trees that you plant in your lifetime are going to stand in this region. And that is awesome. Lots of your landscapes are going to remain familiar landscapes. But those big storms up in the north, the potential for that big hail, that's where you're going to put your defensive energy. You should prioritize drainage on your property and you should be aware there will be seasonal droughts as well as deluges. You might wanna think about backup irrigation depending on what side of the ridge you are on. Remember, if you look back at that map, the red is the wet side, the blue is the dry side of the ridge. Think about also how you're gonna protect plants at sensitive times. There are big challenges ahead. And remember, the shift is coming soon we're talking in the next 10 to 15 years, you will have completed a fair amount of your climate transition. So please dig in there, my friends, and get ready. You got a real solid outlook and I am rooting for you. I'm gonna get sentimental for a minute. You know, I love America when it's at its most distinctive and I had the good fortune to spend time in these mountains, particularly the Carolinas and Georgia with one of my dear teachers and mentors, Dr. John Day. He loved these mountains. He taught me to appreciate their distinct and beautiful ecology. He, he died about nine years ago, Dr. Day did, and I thought about him a lot as I got ready to make this video. He would have loved knowing that his special places were gonna stay special, that by and large, they're gonna stay the way that he loved them. I'm so grateful for the gift he gave me, learning to understand the natural world in this part of the country in a deep way, and I'm grateful that I can see these landscapes in my mind that are gonna be preserved here in Appalachia. I'm so glad to give you this good news. Thanks for listening. This is Dr. Scherning with AR signing out. Please like and subscribe, help get the message out there. There is hope. We can prepare for what's coming. Let's get ready.